All right, welcome back. We are talking about saving for retirement, but we also need to live a full life right now. David Geller, author of Wealth and Happiness, he's an expert on this subject, and he joins us uh, for some tips on how to live a better life now. I don't want to wait till I'm 67, right. David. I want to right. live a good life now. Wealth and happiness. Do you have to make a ton of money in order to be really happy? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely. People not. are sitting there saying, my life would be so much better if I made three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. I wouldn't have a worry in the world. Probably not. Okay. So lots of studies. The most recent from Princeton a couple of years ago that said if you measure happiness as people experience their life, that above seventy-five thousand dollars of income, as people get wealthier, they don't get happier. Why is that? The reason it is because people confuse pleasure with. Um, ov with um, overall happiness. Okay. So people think buying the nice car, having the luxury ah, home, the taking the things. great vacation is going to make them happier. <laughs> right. And to be candid, getting the new car does give you a short burst of happiness. But we all have the experience that six months down the road, the new car that was so exciting is now just another car. And it's a burden. And it's a burden. So what drives happiness, there are really three keys to a happy life. All right, give it to us because okay. we're ready to hear this. Okay, the first one's the quality of your most important relationships. Okay. Right, and that's probably the biggest piece. I would say so the, the biggest, biggest. The biggest if piece. If you don't have a happy home life, if you don't have a good right. partner, if your friends are not loyal and you don't that's have right. that solid core of people right. around you, you're not going to be happy. That's right. That's right. So the quality of the most important relationships and those relationships have four defining characteristics. Okay, go ahead. Right? They are mutual trust. You trust each other to tell the truth. You trust each other to give advice in the recipient's best interests. Mutual caring. You're there for people when times are tough and you're there for people when times are good. You give your friends an opportunity to fully tell you about about all the very good stuff. Okay. And then the third piece, the most important, is people who will talk to you, people you, you can talk to without fear of judgment. Because we self discover as we self disclose. And we won't self disclose if we feel we're being judged. If we have someone who will listen to us without judgment and with compassion, it's the relationship home run. I mean, do you think this is one of the reasons why we see so many millionaires and, and you think their life is great, but you go and you peel back the walls or you walk through the front door and you realize it is not a happy home? Right. Even you drive down, like, what is it, Powers Ferry, you see all these million-dollar right. homes. They look amazing right. from the right. outside, but the inside of the home is not as right. pretty landscaped as the outside. And often it's not because those people confuse those people think being successful is about how much money you have, but it's not. Right? Being successful is about the quality of those most important relationships. It's about having these um, engaged or flow experiences, what athletes call being in, in the zone, mm -hmm. and it's about making a difference in the lives of others. All right, very good. We want to get to this, too. I'm going to read this here. There was an interesting study done by, uh, by Expedia. A lot of people use Expedia. Yeah. Yeah. 46 Forty-six percent of employed Americans reported that they never check in with work while they're on vacation. However, 59 percent of men make it a habit to check in with the office. Office, uh, Not surprisingly, those who check in at least once a day reported a higher stress level. Right. Duh. Forty-seven percent of people who went on vacation last year like their job. Seventy-one percent who have not vacationed in five years don't. Right. It all makes sense, right? Right. First of all, if you're going on vacation, you're going on vacation to spend time with loved ones, right? Right? With your wife, with your kids. So why would you take time that you've set aside for your family and go back to the office? Hey, listen. Why would you do it? You're preaching to a choir here. I mean, I may get in trouble from my bosses who want us to have our blackberries on us at all at all times. times. But I, I don't call me on vacation. Right. right. Turn it off. Right. Okay. The second part is... If you're always working, you're always in, you know, the real details. But when you step back, when you go on vacation and you don't work for a week or 10 days or even two weeks, all of a sudden you'll see the world differently, right? You'll see much more strategic opportunities. Number three, right? In the end, we all need time to rest and pause. Right. So the guy who hasn't taken a vacation in five years, he's just exhausted. You've got to go on vacation, folks. All right, very good, David Geller. Thank you for the tips. Appreciate it and the breakdown. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back to wrap up the show.